name is Bartłomiej Chojnacki. I'm from Poland, from Mega Acoustic Company. I'm the leading acoustic research engineer there. Um, it's my pleasure to open this part of the exhibition and fair of the lectures. Um, I'm very, very impressed how the organizers are trying to bring together the manufacturers, attendants, and the scientists and educators, which I am as well. So um, I wanted to bring it, bring the topic of the room acoustic a little closer to also some kind of the manufacturer in the industry, because I still I think the room acoustic is kind of the exotic topic for most of us, and uh, many people are not aware about why acoustics is so important. But actually, it's the like the knowledge is going growing up very fast. Uh, even current fair is presenting this because now we have many rooms treated. Like a few years ago, it was just like 10% of the room or even the stand, exhibition, exhibition stands treated with any acoustic panels. Now we have many of them, which I am very happy of because uh, it's the, the, the still this is the ma most important part of our work to let you know why you should invest in the acoustics so um, it's the also good time that we have today the trade day so mainly we are meeting the dealers the press officers and uh, it's even more important for you than the final customer to have the very good room acoustics in your showroom because if you will introduce the good quality stuff devices in your showroom to the customer with the good acoustics, it's the best performance you can achieve there. And of course, this is the higher chance that the customer will take the stuff home and finally maybe buy it, right? So even the final de the dealers should really take care about it. Here we have one of our realization with the mega acoustic panels in audio on audio equipment dealer in Poland, where the room is fully treated. Those guys really pr uh, told me that uh, after the treatment in the room, they feel another life of their salon, so the, their dealing shop. So they start to sell more and more, and because in their room stuff always sounds good. And then, of course, <laughs> to be honest, there is another business purpose for this uh, this kind of the treatment because you know acoustics starts to be sometimes the kind of explanation for everything. Like, of course, it doesn't sound good in my room. Oh, because you have the poor acoustics, right? So, okay, you are the dealer. You are selling the equipment. You have the correct acoustic devices in your room. And there is no explanation there is a poor acoustic because it sounds good and okay, customer is taking the home, it sounds worse. Okay, man, you need the acoustic as well. So good starting point for selling the acoustic panels as well. So for the current lecture, um, what about us? We are the uh, Polish leading uh, acoustic treatment manufacturer located somewhere there. This is our place in the Europe. We are very, in advance in the acoustic foam processing and for some years we are using also some CNC cutting machines and UV printing to achieve best quality fiberglass panels which are a little more advanced than the standard foams and of course the diffusers with the full full range of the offers and we'll shortly about me my place in this company because I'm the in, uh, acoustic research engineer, so usually I call myself the scientist. I try to be connected with all industrial and scientific mm, environments, which keeps us like updated on any news uh, around the world, both with the uh, European Acoustic Association, with the Audio Engineering Society, when I have the pleasure to be the member of the Education Committee, and uh, Chair on Europe in International in ASSDA. And also, I'm trying to pursue for the uh, PhD degree in acoustics in AGH University of Science and Technology in Krakow, in Poland. So for this lecture, I try to very, very fast sweep from the basics of the room acoustics, because uh, I want you and me to talk at least at some point with the common language, right? Uh, I want to have the full understanding of uh, some topics I will cover today. And uh, 
I want to, I, f I hope it will take like 25 up to 30 minutes maximum because the most important part here is this case studies and Q&A because um, for the dealers, I won't make the acoustic engineers from you in half an hour. There is no doubts. Uh, and I won't even try, of course. So uh, learning the basics and uh, like looking how we can do this, how to answer the questions like the customers or ever, anyone else will ask you for um, in the way like how does it work? Why should I do this? It's more important than like uh, knowing how we manufacture this or, or what is the you know lowest part of the knowledge to to pr to pr like provide the self-made panels uh, to s fix the acoustics. So uh, beginning with those basics I explained uh, in acoustics we can we can present the some kind of the signal representation if in time on the frequency domain. So the time is the basically the recording of the sound pressure or the voltage for the microphone in the time domain. It can look like this, a single sine wave. But mm, considering the room acoustics, we usually don't use it. Uh, we prefer the frequency domain representation, which describes the energy in every frequency uh, in the given signal. Of course, this is very, very mm, easy basic topic. So we have just one sine wave with one frequency. We have more complex tones, like birds singing, which where are some more frequencies. It uh, begins to look a little more complex, but of course, when you are talking about the music, so we are listening to anything, usually the spectrum looks rather like this. So we have the almost full frequency range with the many frequencies in the same time, complex tones, many instruments, and that's why it's closest to here. Why I'm talking about it? Because the technical data of the devices, like the amplifiers, columns, it's quite obvious for everyone how does it look like? So we have the power, we have the frequency bandwidth or the sensitivity, right? Everyone knows how does it look uh, like and what does it mean? In acoustics, not really. Because basic representation of the acoustic panels specification are some kind of the plots with the strange named coefficients like diffusion or absorption coefficients. But it's very, it's in the basic level, it's very easy to understand this. So it's the representation in the frequency band describes in which frequency band uh, the panel is working in at which power, let's simplify this to the, uh, to the power or the quality of the panel. Usually those coefficients are from the range from zero to one, so you can consider like in this frequency band, this panel is not working, here is working perfectly, here is average, right? So basically, if you are searching for the acoustic panels, search for those plots or just for any coefficient an acoustic manufacturer is providing because they're, if they are not providing any coefficients, so maybe they are not really aware about what they are doing, right? Any type of the coefficients is very important in acoustics. Like, you know, you, you never will buy the columns or the amplifier without the knowledge about the power, right? So also don't do with the <laughs> acoustic treatment devices. Um, going through to the acoustics, let's consider we have the studio monitor with the beautiful free field response measured in an echoic chamber. This is presented by the manufacturer. Oh, it's awesome, right? Uh, and I will have it in the room. Of course you won't. We have the room. Let's consider Carter's uh, setup. What This is not important now. You are putting this in the room, this kind of the response speaker, and you are receiving this. So uh, it stops looking very impressive. It looks terrible. Uh, we have an influence of the standing waves, influence of the ro room first reflections, and yeah, uh, some people are not aware about it, and yeah, that is why looking on this is totally not not important in this case. So, and even this is kind of the good situation because what you you usually have rather this, this is the real root characteristic. So we have very, very many notches, peaks, valleys, amplification, de-amplifications, it's never even. And you need to have the room acoustic to solve this. In the basic level, I divide every measurement, every project I'm developing to the two ways. So you have the wave acoustics and geometrical acoustics. There is a border in acoustics between them called shredder frequency, which means after this frequency, we can neglect 
some wave phenomenon in the rooms. Before this, we have the wave acoustics and the sound propagation described by the wave equation. Uh, after, we have the, some kind of the geometrical acoustics and the optic type of the sound propagation, with more similar to the light propagation in the room. So like the beams with the Snell room considered as a main principle for the sound propagation, right? And why we need to, co to divide this? Because on this plot, it looks like this. So here you have so-called room standing waves, room modes, uh, room resonance frequencies, eigenfrequencies, four names for the same phenomenon, right? So um, here is this range, and after this you have the uh, first reflection influence with the, some kind of effects of comb filtering. I will talk about it later, because first let's stick with the uh, wave acoustics and the room modes. This is the first thing, and some people say even the only one you need to do in uh, rooms. Of course, I do not assign this uh, sentence. You need to take care about the full acoustic problems, not only the standing waves and the room modes, because it's always present. It's not, it's not looking, yeah, this is a very important statement now. So this is not working like this. Someone will tell you, okay, I have the good room acoustics without any treatment. You can have something okay, right, without very, very very easy to notice troubles with room acoustics, right? But your room isn't faking the physics. If you have not treated first reflections, you always have them present. You can have some luck and set up the listening position with the speakers to the very, very, let's say, uh, by the luck usually, the good setup with the position of the speakers and the uh, listening point and have the small influence of the room modes. But it's never like, you know, always, if you have the non-treated room, you can only imagine how does, will it look like if you will have it treated. Yeah, and you will never know <laughs> the difference until you try. Okay, so let's go back to the standing waves. And then the basics of the, this phenomenon, I like this GIF because it describes quite well. We have two traveling waves the green one in this side, the mm, blue one is reflected from the wall. We can consider this as this room, right? I'm here, the sound source, I'm speaking to you. The My sound, uh, my, my voice is reflecting from the back wall and going back. In some given frequencies, in given points in the room, if you consider this axis as the length of the room, the, the waves are are uh, applying to each other, and we have amplification and deamplification. And take a look on the red wave here. So basically, you have in some points, you have all the time the nodes. So the zero pressure points. In the worst case, you will, you know, you won't hear my voice. It will be li like one frequency, and you will uh, sit in the wrong place. If you consider this as the you know, the low frequencies, the bass. So we have the bass player playing, and you can he cannot hear some notes, for example, if uh, it will be wrong place in the room and it will be non-treated room. This is what basically the room modes are. So uh, in the rooms, in the two-dimensional space, it looks something like this. So you have the speakers, you have the listening points, and those blue areas is the very low pressure of the sound. So basically, on these lines, even you cannot hear anything for the given room frequency, which is dependent of the width, length, and the height of the, of the room, of course. It's quite easy to calculate, but I will talk about it later. So of course, the, what is the main trouble here? That if you can see, those nodal lines are usually like in the middle on the axis of the rooms. And this is our main problem because we all near always you put the listening point on axis of the room, right? And uh, that's why you are experiencing this very hard like, boomy bass on like, some given frequencies. This is all about the room resonances. And uh, you cannot avoid this. To find the best point is something like this in these frequencies. So you don't see it in the red area, which is also bad. This is the amplification. The blue area is totally de-amplification, so zero pressure. So sitting in the green zone or yellow zone is best, best, right? But you can do this in this case for this frequency, but then you experience all the time the troubles with the other. So this is why those frequencies will be okay, those will be terrible. So 
uh, one short question. This, this is calculated by uh, our, our acoustic calculator. It's in Polish so far, but it's quite easy. I think everyone <laughs> will be able to use it. I will show, show it also later. And um, of course, you can also use some um, basic math calculation and the transformation to calculate the rooms for your own room. Simplify, you just need to take the wave equation, uh, make some preparation for the uh, plane wave equation, consider some sound intensity problems, and make some more maths to achieve. Yeah, yeah sure, right? Just don't. <laughs> Yeah, ju ju just don't, guys, because uh, there is no need for this. Uh, why I'm talking about? I was on one of our um, advertisement videos in Mega Acoustic. I was deriving the full uh, full solution for the wave equation, and it took about 25 minutes to derive this. Right? So just don't. This is the final solution, but don't. Uh, you can use the calculators, which for works correctly for the rectangular rooms. Uh, this is not the only one calculator. Yeah, it's, I recommend this because I know it's good because I made it. So, <laughs> but uh, what are the problems present now on the slide? So, this works only correctly for the rectangular and empty, fully reflective rooms. So, take a look. If you put the, pr the furniture there, you put the columns, you put some screens, whatever, and it stops look so plain. It does not look so ideal. Take this. You should have here the red, 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 and red, right? In every corner. Corners are very, very supposed to be the problem with the problematic points of the generation of standing waves. But because of the furniture, they're a little tangled, curved. And that's why, basically, to be f fully sure, about what kind of the frequency modes uh, you experience in your rooms, you need to measure this. There is no other point. But, of course, uh, the starting to calculate is a very, very good starting point, and you can calculate it like with 5 to 10 hertz of the accuracy, and most of the bass traps would be able to tune to those frequencies you will calculate. Because, of course, the, there are more troubles, because usually, Maybe not the showrooms, the standard rooms when we are listening to music looks totally strange. It can be in many different mm, ways uh, treated and shaped, and then the modes look even worse. So it's also described on our site if you would like to take a look on this. But basically, mm, you can, you, what you need to be aware of, the corners are always problematic. So this is good kind of the blind shot. If you even don't know much about the acoustics, can't make the measurements, you can even try to listen to some much high hard bass music and try to go into the corners and listen to if the bass is there is more bass inside. If there is, this means the, this is the room mode generation point, just put the bass traps there, right? And uh, of course, very popular rooms with the you know curves like the cut roofs, and then the even the corners on the this joint between the ceiling and the curve is uh, very very problematic usually, and very standard. Yeah, this is kind of the jump so L-shaped um, room with the curves on the one side. Also, take a look how the maximum pressure zones are like extended in this side, right? So um, also there is a very important thing about how the materials, uh, whatever the materials put in the interior. So uh, modern interiors are full of the glass for the open spaces. Like this is a one big room, right? And it's getting more problematic. We can calculate with so-called FEM, so finite elements methods to for calculation the room eigenfrequencies, but um, it's more complicated and those windows have great uh, influence of the room modes and even, of course, for the pressure distribution in the room. So uh, it starts to look rather like this. So here uh, we have something totally not accurate for the mm, rectangular room equations. So what's the solution? So basically just put the base traps in the, uh, in the corners, in the problematic places, usually the corners are like kind of the blind shot in the treated rooms you can see in the corners like fully covered with the 
uh, based traps. You can use broadband based traps or tuned resonators for the given frequencies. The frequency, yeah, also in this case, is just put it in every corner. Um, or, ex or as you can see, uh, or how many you can see put there, because you know the WAF factors, or uh, how many you are able to buy, like just two is still more than nothing, right? And um, the bass traps can have different frequency characteristics. For example, the tuned are usually prepared for one frequency to absorb it very much, and the other less. The broadband have the full frequency range to absorb. Uh, which is better? Of course, I can say this one is usually safe because, especially if you can't calculate correctly which frequencies are problematic. To use the tuned bass traps, you need to be aware which frequency is wrong here, which is the resonant to to order these tuned bass, tra bass traps, right? So this is very safe, but mm, of course. The negative of this is that uh, even those base traps are 40 centimeters in the edge length, right? So pretty big. Those are 25, smaller. But those, even they are quite big, we won't make bigger because no one will use that. But come on, 40 centimeters is big enough, right? And see that the frequency absorption, the, the sound absorption coefficient is dropping down around 60, 63, so basically it stops working under 50, and we won't force it to work further. So if you want like, have the absor to absorb the lower frequencies, like under 50 hertz, you, are, you, you can't use anything else than the tuned bass traps, right? So um, I think we will stop for now with the uh, low frequencies. Let's go for the geometric acoustics, and uh, here is one Mm, tip for me when I'm usually considering the this border between the wave and geometric acoustics. Because if you will calculate the room frequency modes, you can calculate some lowest, but you can calculate like everything for the very high frequencies. You don't need to do this because of the this border. I usually uh, like like assume it around 200 hertz. It's dependent to the volume of the room and the reversion time, but yeah, let's say above the 200 hertz, there is no problem with the room modes. So above this border, you are considering the, the ray type of the acoustics. And how does it look like? Let's go further with our calculator, which is returning you these beautiful plots. The, as I said, the, in the higher frequency range, you are using the kind of the light type of the propagation for the sound, like so the angle of the incidence is equal to the angle of the reflections. You can take a look, so if you put the speakers in the room and the listening point, uh, so basically on every room, every wall you have some points, which is the equal, co uh, equal, equal angle of the incident wave and the reflected wave, which is called so first reflection point. And you need to treat it correctly to avoid the sound amplification and the amplification. So um, this is basic thing, the basic case. You, if you will consider just the first reflections, but yeah, in the real situation, sometimes it can look <laughs> like this. Yeah, and uh, here makes the trouble. Uh, it's all dependent what kind of the room it is. If it's very very sterile, like the mm, studio or very, very mastering, very accurate mastering studio. You need to care about more of them. But we are talking about the high field listening rooms. And usually they are the showrooms when you need the space for the stuff, right? Or living rooms in the customer's homes, right? So yeah, let's stay with this. Even if you will treat with single panels, each of those points, those points, you will experience how huge uh, amplification in the experience of the, uh, the perception of the sound will be. Uh, you know, I, w to be honest, we don't have the not happy and not enjoy the customers which are angry after buying our panels. They can be angry b after we make the presentation and then they notice how much they need the acoustic panels because they need to encourage the wife, encourage the, uh, to invest some money and make some, move some furniture to achieve better acoustics because they start to be aware how important it is. Uh, yeah, this is our calculator, which I recommend you from, uh, also for one good feature. 
because I think this is the only calculator in the internet for the first reflections, which allows you to use the non-symmetric room configuration. So for example, you can do something like this. This is a very common situation in the living room, right? So you have the, here you have the kitchen or something, and here you are putting the uh, speakers, you have the listening point. None of the calculators are found in the internet can use it, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, but anyway, there's another one. So maybe there are just two. So still, this is quite good feature, <laughs> I think. Yeah, okay. So mm, what is why the first reflections are problematic? Here I have another very nice mm, GIF. Uh, how uh, does it look like if you have the one sound wave incoming and then let's say this impulse and another like delayed in the time domain right this is exactly what the reflection is you have the direct sound uh, approaching to you from my side and the reflection from the wall right and it's delayed it's the same sound just delayed a little bit in the time domain and take a look from the first point it looks like the refresh it's, uh, the first impulse have the plain frequency characteristics. If the second is growing, so the reflection is coming, it's become to be more and more amplified, and de-amplified, and of course those valleys are even able to calculate because it corresponds with the time difference because between those two impulses, right? Mm, for the uh, more advanced acoustic calculation, we can even very accurately, uh, accuracy, uh, with a high accuracy say, which reflection is which on basing on the uh, impulse response measurement. And this is the phenomenon called comp filtering, and it occurs in every room. That is what I said, you know, uh, even if someone will say if we have good acoustics, so when you don't have the floor, you don't have the ceiling, you know, the floor and the ceiling are usually the toughest thing, the very hard to treat. But anyway, it's, it's present, right? And it looks like this. Here you have those valleys, caused by the comb filtering, by the first reflections overlaying in the spot with the direct sound. How to treat them? So basically, calculation of those points is easy. Many tools for this uh, in the internet. And simply, you just need to put some wall panels for <coughs> those points, uh, which is best, the best possible, the, the, uh, the, the best frequency range we can achieve. So basically, if we consider we need to treat the first reflection from about 150 hertz, you should have the fully absorptive panel in the 150 hertz and everything above, right? To make it totally clear. Even this is nonsense to totally to save the money on treating there. Even someone will say you, okay, you don't need the absorption from this frequency or upper this frequency. This is, those are just two or four panels, right? One, two, three, four, and usually those in some rooms, those two points lie close together, and you can like solve this with one panel, like 60 centimeters of the width, right? And it's uh, quite easy to do. But mm, some points, uh, when I have the questions, okay, why you recommend those uh, absorbing panels? Won't I over attenuate my room? I can say you won't, because take a look, just four panels, right? So it's even it should be like two per three meters room to attenuate hard uh, this kind of the room with the just three or four panels, right? So it's totally safe. So mm, the mm, the important thing you need to be aware about it. So for example, the diffusers usually uh, in opposite to absorbers have the little limited uh, frequency range they are working on. So uh, you need to have the absorption and diffusion coefficients in the frequency band, you want to have the first reflection treated. For example, if you have, let's say, here is 300 hertz, we have the very strong comb filtering in this area, and you will try to treat the first reflections with this panel, it cannot work so correctly, because it does, does not have the acoustic properties in this frequency range. It will like clarify most things from the 500 hertz, but above, below it will be the problems, right? With the, those panels are a little more relevant. That's why for the very strong first reflections, I always recommend absorbers. 
I know that there are some purists and the high fee maniacs will say, no, absorption is bad. We need to diffuse the sound. Of course, diffusing, diffusion is awesome, but we need to be aware about the limitation of the diffusers and the narrow band working frequencies. Mm. Last thing I, need to I wanted to cover from the basics of my presentation is the reverberation. Reverberation is the ki some kind of the mm, amount of energy you are storing in your room because of the late reflections, right? We call it decay time, and um, usually in not treated rooms, totally mm, empty, it looks like this, so it's quite high. Um, the problem is we cannot, like, we have some standards, like EBU tech standard for the broadcasting for the studios from the um, Steerize studios, and um, and, uh, but it does not correspond very well with the high fee recent rooms. When I'm designing the acoustics, I never try to tell the customer, okay, man, now you need to have the 0 0.25 seconds of the reverberation time because it's totally non-objective parameter. For example, me, uh, I like to listen to in a little higher reverberation time, but you need to be aware that the reverberation curve, so the curve around the frequency, need to be kind of left flat. This is very important. It needs to be flat, and it cannot be too high, because uh, then uh, it starts to be acoustic fault. You can use it like, it can be here, the flat line here, or if someone wants to like the sterile studio conditions, it can be even this line, right? But uh, it needs to be plain, like not totally amplified in many frequencies because any kind of the non-linearity in acoustics is bad. And uh, like uh, treating with the panels is very easy to decrease the reverberation in the room. I think I'm a little... Mm -hmm make it faster, this is not really important now, because uh, the important thing is here, that if you are applying the acoustic panels, of course, you are, for example, you are treating the first reflections, and you are mm, also decreasing the reverberation time, right? So you need to be aware that to not use too many absorbing panels, to for and of course, you need to be aware about the frequency characteristics to avoid this, what we call the sound, the, uh, the room over attenuation. If you will over attenuate the room, you won't like it, definitely. Uh, of course, some changes are very okay. For example, those are so called active uh, acoustic roller banners. If you, you know, you can have the pilot to move them up and down and try to uh, adjust the act uh, acoustics despite. For according to your mood or whatever. For example, in this case, I was designing this from the very nice treated room, kind of the live room, and for those royal banners, I could make, you know, this like, smoked jazz club with the very, very mild and characteristics, right? It's awesome in the, <laughs> the purpose for the um, active acoustic banners, but yeah, it still depends what your customer will like. Of course, you won't know. That's why we have the standards, and you won't make it like blind shot objective. Okay, I will give you the JS Club, and you will be happy because we have no idea if he will be, right? So uh, you need to try to keep it plain first. Uh, and uh, the most common thing in uh, small rooms is this type of the curve. Because you have the furniture, you have some wall curtains, the window curtains, which is absorbing mainly mid and high frequencies, right? But they're not touching the low frequencies, and it happens like this. It's very easy audible. If I sh would show it to you, even in this room, I think we can little, uh, we little experience this. Maybe I have quite, you hear? I have quite high and uh, mid frequency voice. And by using the, uh, the electroacoustic system, you are hearing a lot of the low frequencies here because uh, I provide more energy and my voice sounds much more lower, right? Uh, because, yeah, we don't have the bass traps here. It's quite obvious in the conference rooms, right? But still, uh, for the important thing is here, you need to be aware of the characteristics of the panels. For example, the one panel is quite new in our offer provided by Architected Sound, which we are dealer around the Europe, is OptiD, which is the, some kind of the mm, slat absorber with the characteristics, for example, like this blue curve. So it's uh, absorbing only low frequencies, 
do not touch the high frequencies. And this is the result of the adaptation using the OptiD panel, right? So you are running out of this, going for this level, right? And it's awesome. This is like the solution for half the problems in the rooms, but you need to be, of course, aware about it. So we are, I think, in the end of these basics. I think I, I, I'm on the good time. So it's one of the rooms fully treated. So you have the bass traps, foam, broadband, very accurate there. Reversion time is OK. First reflection, absorbing panels. But I used many absorbing panels there because you know this is the showroom for the dealer. In a high fee listening room, you usually have one sweet spot. In uh, showrooms for the dealers, it's not so obvious. For example, you have like meetings or 10 or 20 customers at the same time on the presentation. You need to put them somewhere, and you need to have the bigger amount of the room treated for this. That's why I use many absorbing panels there, but then it blocked me to use more absorbing panels on the front wall. I don't like diffusers on the front wall. I try to avoid them, but I need to treat this wall. I couldn't use the absorbers, so I used the diffusers, right? Because those reflections on the front wall are usually weaker. Those are very strong, usually very strong. So I use the absorbers, then diffuser on the front wall, and it looks like quite correctly. Also, the reverberation were well treated, and keeping very, very good characteristics on the mm, whole room. So, uh, also, we are trying to. Mm, Basically, let's say, teach people how to listen to the the music, organizing some events to compare. Last time on the audio video show in Warsaw, we organized two rooms, one not treated, second fully treated, you know, and make some surveys around the people with the how they feel like. With of course the sound playing system was the same. It's the the results, of course, it wasn't surprising for me. But it was like 90% for, of course, this is totally something totally different. And OK, this is the uh, part of the, the, the finish on my main part. I will try to skip from uh, some very important questions, because at some point, I realized that it is impossible to make the lecture from the room acoustics like covering everything. Because yeah, I make I won't make the room uh, the acoustic engineers from you. So I explain you also some like basic features. I receive the quiz questions from the customers or the students when I'm teaching on the university. For example, can I fix my room with these 10 euro per panel panels foams? It's cheap. I want to do this. The answer is yes, of course you can, but the depth of the acoustic absorber is very very important for the absorption coefficients. Take, take this, if you will, com uh, will compare the six centimeters, the same absorber, with the 10 centimeters, let's say in the 200 hertz, 0 0.3 absorption coefficient versus 0 0.6, right? It's two times more effective. And you know that's why there's the very, very bad feeling about the acoustic foams on the market. Because people usually the foams are even like cut into some fancy pyramid styles, right? And people are using them, and they, they think that will solve a lot of the problems with the uh, room acoustic. It won't. It's good for some purposes, but for the first reflection, for example, you need best panel you can provide, right? So it needs to be tough. 10 centimeters is kind of the standard. And of course, you don't need more than 10 centimeters usually. Of course, like 15 is totally maximum, because as you can see in 12, uh, 200 hertz, as I said about the frequency uh, ranges for the wave and the geometrical acoustics, above the, this is the kind of the border for the fr shredder frequency, right? So under this frequency, you don't need to take care about the wall panels, because there are no, no, uh, no problems with first reflection like in 100 hertz. So we don't need to have the very high frequency, uh, high absorption coefficient in 100 hertz on wall panels, right? Let's go farther. So this is very common. So is the acoustic foam better than the fiberglass? So the answer is no. They are very similar. You can take a look on this plot when I made the calculation. So the quality of the acoustic material is described by so-called flow resistivity. And it's um, measured for many acoustic materials. 
And the answer is the good acoustic foam, for example, our foams we are using, have the flow resistivity of about 28 to 30 k every part. The good fiberglass have around 30 to 40 uh, k's of yeah, this beautiful unit, some PA multiplied by S for the square meter, right? And this is how those materials, let's consider this is the acoustic foam and fiberglass. They're very similar. And of course, some audiophiles will try to argue that of course, but in the high frequencies, it's like 10% difference, acoustic foam is here is better or something. So comparing those plots, in the practical use, they will be really almost the same. So, but take uh, care about that we are talking about the acoustic foam, because foam can be, po can be present in different, uh, different types. You can have the furniture foam, you have the, which have the closed cells, and have the flow resistivity of about 5,000. So then, I agree, it's terrible. But yeah, the, the clue is to buy the panels from the acoustic foam, of course. Mm. Difference between the uh, diffusion absorption is the topic I was I started already a little bit to talk about. For example, in the terms of the frequency ranges, right? If you have the acoustic panels, oh, I'm very sorry for the <laughs> Polish uh, axis here, but I think you should be already aware about the numbers here. So uh, the diffusion is great because you are not using acoustic energy in the room. It's very important. So. Uh, basically, and the diffusers are also safe. You cannot like mm, bad treat your room with the diffusers. Absorbers are quite dangerous if you use too many of them, or even if you will use weak absorbers. But diffusers are safe, so this is very good acoustic solution. It's in I think the additional small uh, reflections, which called yes, uh, which are called diffused reflections, is increasing the spatialness of the sound in the room, and you feel like in the v very well diffused room, you feel like covered with the with the sound around. But um, <laughs> also, I think it's important to say diffusers are almost like to as achieve the diffuse, uh, diffusion with the same size of the panel, you need to pay something like six times more because the diffusers are also expensive. And um, the main problem here is the uh, narrow band of working panel. So you, uh, you cannot use it like to fully treat your room. With absorption, it's much more easier. So you need to be wise using them. So then there is a question, where should I put the diffusers? It's a very important thing, which I try to fight <laughs> around the internet, around the lectures I'm leading. Because when I see, you know, those big skyline diffusers on the front wall, like covering half of this wall, even just imagine how expensive are those diffusers. Usually something like over 10,000 euros each. And this is the worst place you can place it. I have a special place for the uh, special plot for this because the efficiency of the diffuser is very deep, uh, very fragile for the um, incidence wall uh, angle. So, for example, you have the let's consider this situation. The best place for the diffusers are the back walls because if I'm talking now to the back wall of this room and you put the diffusers there, we have the zero degree angle of the incidence wave there, right? And it's working almost on the, let's say, full power, right? In my situation, if I, it will be put on the first reflection somewhere there, it would be like 45 degrees, 40, 30. So take a look on this. It's like almost 50%. And the same is if I will put it on the, back, uh, on the front wall. If I would be the speaker, I would be the sound source, right, the column, and I will stand here, have the pretty big diffuser on the uh, front wall, it will be the angle like, I don't know, 70? Let's say 70, so it is, that's curve. So it's like 15%. So you need to be very, very fragile. Here, diffusers. Here, okay, in the first reflection points on the front wall, it's okay, but not directly between the speakers. It usually can affect like second row of a reflection or something like this, but never, it shouldn't be the first thing you are doing in a room. And yeah, this is kind of the waste of the money. You can take a look, for example, on this slide. Why I'm talking about the angle of the uh, where on incidence wave for the uh, diffuser. 
you can take a look, those stands are a little curved. They are not like totally parallel to the wall. They're curved to the speaker, to the outside, to reduce this effect, effect of the uh, high angle for uh, the incidence wave on the diffuser. I did this on the purpose to also then, of course, use this slide on the, some presentations, but it's very important because just by curving this diffuser, I, like, I increase its efficiency by 20 or 30 percent, right? I can do this on the, on the, on the show, of course, but uh, in the home, it will be a little more important, uh, more <laughs> it will be hard to curve the wall, but you need to be aware about it. And the diffusers uh, placed on the front wall are, as I said, in this situation, saved me from over attenuating the wall, the, the room. It's very important in some cases. But uh, okay, here we have the front wall, and here is the back wall. So still, I kept this, what I just said, back wall with the diffusers. You know. That was the, in front of this wall was the, what I show, uh, told you in the showrooms. So we have the sweet spot, and behind the sweet spot some blank space for the bigger audience. It's very common in the showrooms. So people entered the showroom, like five or six guys, and was very close to the diffuser, totally covered by the sound. And it works very good in this room. So uh, last, I think one of the last questions here will be, it's better to use less stronger panels or more weaker. Uh, so the answer is, of course, I already covered this, to use more stronger panels than some weaker, because this is the effect of the over attenuating the room. If you use some very low, like this, two centimeters full foams, you will over attenuate the room, keeping the low frequencies non-treated. It's terrible. Don't do this, especially in uh, high listening rooms. And uh, so there are some purposes to do this. For example, in the, like office spaces, the call centers, or something like this kind of the rooms, because then you need to like treat some other like the uh, acoustic faults, like the flutter echo or something. And it's totally no need to do this in the high fee listening rooms. Uh, I think last question here. So about the diffusers, usually you meet these numbers. And I do not recommend to look at them until, until you see the plots of the measurement, because of course, this is totally no way to achieve this, because in the diffusers, there are some rules to design them. Uh, my master thesis and also the bachelor thesis was supervised by one of the best uh, specialists in the diffusers type of, in Poland and also around the world. And last time he derived some equations how to predict because the diffusers are also absorbing because of the shape and some acoustic phenomena on the surface of the diffusers, there is the very important thing that don't use diffusers with the depth to well ra ratio higher than five. So for example, you will have our diffusers do not exceed this because we know that diffusers with this ratio over five are very strongly absorbing, which absorbs cannot diffuse. And then, uh, for example, our diffusers have 10 centimeters of depth with the well width of two centimeters. So this is the border, right? And if you see the diffuser of depth 30 centimeters with the well width, what is the ratio? 30, a little exceeded, right? So don't do this at home, don't. Because uh, those diffusers are very expensive and yeah, it is kind of the waste of the money. They are just enjoying the, you know, the eyesight there. And um, if you want ver very broadband diffuser, you can use some kind of the so-called fractal diffusers. So basically, it's the diffuser inside the diffuser, right? So you have the one diffuser with this well depth. And on the wells, you have another diffuser sticked to increase uh, in the high frequency range the diffusion of the panel. This is good design for the, because you don't uh, risk the absorption in this type of the um, diffusing panels. Okay, I think this is the last question. <laughs> so, uh, very popular, hybrid panels. So, so, so something which is diffusive and reflective in the same, si uh, same time, it's impossible. Which reflect, which uh, uh, diffuse, cannot absorb in the opposite way. Because just imagine, if something is absorbing like 80% of the energy, how can it reflect diffused another 90? 
maybe okay maybe it's like the speakers put behind the, uh, the panels but you you can sometimes meet this kind of the plot so this is absorption this is diffusion right we have 90% of uh, absorbed and 80 diffused no way absorbing panels works like this that in given frequency ranges it can absorb and the other can diffuse like going back to optd it's absorbing here and diffusing up from 1k. This is real, because here it's not absorbing, so it can diffuse, right? And you need to be aware about it if like, someone is excited. Is it diffusing or absorbing? Oh, both. Of course it is. It's very easy. Oh, uh, it is normalized. Uh, you mean the normalized diffusion coefficients to the reflecting plate, right? Yeah, it, it is normalized, but it's calculated. Yeah, uh, so in the calculation, it's very easy to achieve, like close to one. Uh, because you are not applying the absorption, right? Uh, for the measurements, it's usually it's never touched the one. You are totally right. It's usually like 0 0.9. It's considered like a fully diffusion because you cannot achieve more. Okay, I think I will release the uh, point here. Thank you very much for attendance. You can meet me in the hall two stand G04 uh, in the mega acoustic and Taga harmony uh, stand when we have our panels also. I will appreciate very much um, talking with you and uh, like explaining something more in private if you are interested. And okay, thank you very much for the attendance.